All right, you guys, welcome to Waves of Wellness number 12. Hard to believe we've been doing this for three months. So I'm so excited to have you guys. And today you're in for a big treat. We have a special guest, Dr. Vicki, who many of you guys have seen on the admin calls. And for those of you that don't know me, my name is Tracy. And I am a health coach, personal trainer, been in the wellness side of of the world since 2007. And my goal is helping people age stronger and healthier instead of sicker and weaker like my parents. And so that's why QHS was a perfect fit for me because now we get to do it two ways. One, passive way by wearing your device. And then two, meeting that device halfway in the middle by instituting healthy lifestyles. So the goal with Waves of Wellness has always been to stack new habits so that they become rituals in your life so that you don't even have to think about it. So like I always say, like brushing your teeth, hopefully many of you don't have to think about brushing your teeth, right? It's a ritual that you do every day mindlessly. So the goal here is that these habits that you learn week after week will build upon each other and compound to make your life healthier and help you achieve your health goals. When we started, I created a survey and sent it out so that y'all could, you know, tell me the things that you're looking to do. And I'm going to send out another one next week because each quarter, it's a good time to look at yourself, look at your goals and, and adjust things. You know, in Alice in Wonderland, Alice says, which way should I go? Which way do I go? And the cat says, well, where are you going? And Alice says, well, I don't know where I'm going. And so the cat says, well, how can I show you the way? So every quarter, please expect a new survey so that we know what kind of content to bring to you. And then this whole entire program will be modeled after you. All right. And today you're going to be able to meet Dr. Vicki. And she is going to share her best tips. Well, after she shares her beautiful background, she will share her best tips on how to support you to support your own immune system. So with this cold and flu season that is upon us, you can live healthier, happier, and just feel good all season. Okay. And um, then of course, you guys know Dr. Gloria. Say hi, Dr. Gloria. Let me unmute you. Um, and today she's going to share a little bit about one of her recipes that's actually coming out. Is it tomorrow or Friday? Wait, tomorrow is Friday. <laughs> okay, Tracy. And so then that way you guys can have, oh my gosh, you guys, this recipe is going to be really good. You want to say hello? Hello, everybody. I guess I need to look up the recipe. I keep forgetting that I need to tell you what recipe is coming out tomorrow. So I'm going to have to look it up in between and cheat a little bit. <laughs> uh, we we do the shows in advance, and so I don't remember what we're going to come out with tomorrow. But we'll we'll figure it out. If not, Tracy will make sure to keep me in line here. So I'll nudge you. Welcome everybody. It's a, it's a pumpkin something. How do oh, you yes, know? It, because it already came out this morning. Oh, it wasn't supposed to. <laughs> I know it was pumpkin soup. Pumpkin it was my pumpkin bisque, my pumpkin bisque, and it already came out this morning. That's why I didn't know what you were talking about. Oh, it's already well, out. It's well, we'll already talk out. It. We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it okay. when the time comes. Right. Awesome. So I, I always want to get feedback as we start from you guys. So who was at Julie's breathwork experience two nights ago? And raise your hand, like the fake hand that, you know, the reaction so I can call on you. I want to hear just a little blurb about your experience. Okay. Raj. I absolutely loved that experience and I almost did that experience before today's call because when I went into, when I came to the meeting with Julie, I was so stiff all from, from my neck, all the way down to the middle of my back. I just felt like a horse just kicked me. And after doing all of that breath work and all of, and going through that whole process, 
I was so relaxed. Even the next morning I was, you know, that's the most like relaxed I believe I've been in that area. And so I was, I really did benefit from, you know, doing something new and also it, I didn't have to do a lot of action. So, um, you know, just breathing, but I was sore the next day, like as if, you know, there was areas that it hit, um, you know, we should be hitting, but that's all I have to say. I loved it. Cool. Thank you. Wonderful. Thanks, Raj. Okay, Linda. All righty. Uh, I was going to say something the night that it happened, and it was very similar to what you experienced, Tracy. Uh, I was vibrating. Well, it started in my hands and then my arms, and then I was vibrating my body to the music um, intentionally, which was also creating probably a little natural um, trimmering. But it was energizing and relaxing at the same time. I mean, I just enjoyed every moment of it, the music, the movement, the breathing, the different breathing, the mouth breathing, the belly breathing. Uh, it was great. I'm oh. looking forward to doing it again. That's awesome. And you know what? We are going to do it again. So I had, I had my conversation had to be cut short, but she is definitely coming back. It's going to be a regular part of, wow, I just need to come up with a really good name for it, <laughs> but we'll, we'll, maybe we'll put out something in the survey for that. Okay. Arison. Uh, the moving situation uh, relaxes you more by getting the energy that you need to continue your day. If you start off with just letting your body go and just moving, plus uh, the breathing exercises help you to concentrate more and give you more clarity on what you're doing. Cool. So you enjoyed it. Yes, I enjoyed it. Was wondering, is she going to have another one this Tuesday night or I never did get the uh, sessions that y'all had that you wanted people to read on, and I never did find that. Oh, the YouTube videos. Okay, I will find those and um, get those out again. I need to remember, if you watch replay number one, which I'll share with you guys in the chat here, then replay, then the two videos in between were actually in the description on the YouTube video. Okay. So I'll find those and then I'll share them in the chat here. Okay. Awesome. Thank you, my dear. All right. So the other five of you that want to share, please keep your hand up. I'm going to pause this so I can get on to Dr. Vicki's teaching, but I definitely want to hear from all of you. So please just keep your hands up in the order that they are. And I will call on you guys after. Okay. So I just want to go ahead and get to the Dr. Vicky session. If I can find her, did she disappear? Woohoo, Dr. Vicky, where are you? Oh, there you are. Okay. Oh, I can't move you. Okay. Um, I'm going to move this to different views so I can look in your face. <laughs> I like looking in eyes. All right. So Dr. Vicky. Welcome to Waves of Wellness, and thank you so much for coming today to share your story. And can you just tell us a little bit about yourself so we can get started? Sure. Um, my my uh, doctoring started as being board certified in OBGYN, which then morphed into wellness for women. And then it women felt so good, they started bringing their husbands in. If you can do this for me, can you do this for him? So it became uh, more of a wellness family practice, brought in complementary medicine, brought in regenerative medicine, and then lastly brought in the energy medicine. So I was kind of a jack of all trades. I had um, chiropractic in the office. And so I did a lot of, of co-managing uh, patients with the chiropractor. So I would do trigger point shots in the office and then he would add electrical stim and we just had this really comprehensive thing going um 
retirement. Well, I should say that um, COVID hit and COVID just threw a monkey wrench in everything as everybody has their own story about that. But what, what absolutely blew me away is that within three to four weeks of COVID hitting, there was this announcement in the medical literature about the difference between the hospitalized and the unhospitalized patient, even if you came in through the emergency room, and what were the five things that those patients were doing that, the, that ended up walking back out as an outpatient versus the hospitalized. And so I got a hold of that and I madly you know, took notes and going, well, I'm doing this, I'm doing this, I'm doing this. That's a really good addition. And, and then you didn't hear about it anymore. It was like, mm, mom's the word because we have to talk the vaccine. And everybody needed to get the uh, vaccine. So we can't talk about natural things that people can do on their own. Goodness gracious, they might screw it up. So we just can't do that. And we have all this vaccine that we've now bought that we have to get rid of. So let's push the vaccine. Okay. So that's my version of things. Okay. So anyway, I printed up those things, those supplements that were initially brought out in March of 2021 when all of this was starting it was or 2020 when it was all starting it was just astounding to me that it just then disappeared so here are my five to six things okay well, wait 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 i want to hear more about you first <laughs> like i want to know i'm i'm so curious about this like how old were you when you realized you wanted to be a doctor well, that's the funny thing is I always thought I was going to be an interpreter for the UN because I loved foreign languages. And yeah. that was my goal. And when I went to college, I couldn't get the languages to fit with the sciences because sciences have four-hour labs, which are just, oh, where do you put a four-hour lab? It interferes with everything. So you either, I learned quickly, have to be in science or you have to be in languages. And so I thought, well, okay, I'm really good at the languages, so I'll pick that up as we go. And I never got back to it just because the labs got longer and you had to have more of them and, you know, well, you know the drill. So, but it was my my high school, um, one of the teachers that actually, as I'm writing my valedictorian speech for, for you know, for, um, for graduation, He's looking over my shoulder and I'm doing this. I'm like, get out of here. You know, you'll, you'll hear this at graduation. And he says, well, I want to know what you're going to tell your classmates, what you're going to be when you, when you grow up. I said, well, I'm going to be an interpreter for the UN. And he started laughing. And I said, you have no right to laugh at my dream. How dare you? And he goes, you're going to be, I said, if you're so smart, what do you, what do you think I'm going to be? He said, you're going to be a doctor someday. I said, oh, that's a hoot. You know, because this is, of course, in the early 70s and women went on to be nurses, not doctors. So and I'm sure, Dr. Gloria, you're nodding your head, too. So um, so I went home and I have four brothers. I'm the only girl. And, you know, my dad, I'm the apple of his eye, um, said, well, how was school today? I, so I told him that story and he just sat back and crossed his arms and he goes, well, why not be a doctor? And I said, you, too? Oh my God, I'm surrounded by people who are just thinking that I'm more than I am, you know, because you were always told you're a girl, you can't do things like that. So, so anyway, that's what started my actual journey is that I didn't think I was going to ever end up in medicine. Nobody in my family was in medicine. So why would I go into medicine? They were all salespeople. <laughs> Well, I think that's pretty remarkable, actually, that they are building you up and encouraging you to be a doctor. And I love how you just kind of casually mentioned that you're writing your valedictorian speech. Yeah. So clearly, you're pretty darn smart as well. <laughs> well, I, I did okay. I did okay, you know, but uh, but it was, that was the start of my journey. And I didn't get into medical school right away because I didn't know the politics that it takes. I thought you're just smart and you get in. Well, oh, no, 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 no. It's not about what you know. It's about who you know. So I did research for a number of years. And um, the lab that I worked in, the MD who ran the lab would never show up for anything. We always worked through our supervisor and yada, yada, and everything went to the, the doc, you know, who you never saw. Well, he came to lunch one day. And it just, it was like out of the blue, nobody knew he was coming. He sat down at our table 
and he was going around the table and blah, blah, blah. And he got to me and he said, what do you want to be when you grow up? I said, well, you're going to think this is crazy, but I always wanted to go to medical school. And he went, hmm, okay. So the next, so he said to me, did you apply? Yeah, I did. And I, I applied to, you know, da -da 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 -da. he goes, apply early admission and see how that goes. And then he got up from the table and he left. And I thought, well, that was weird. So the next week, he comes back to lunch. And he sits down and he looks at me and he goes, congratulations. And I went, excuse me? And he goes, you'll see. <laughs> I just got total chills with that. That's awesome. I, right? Again, it's not what you know, it's who you know. So all of a sudden, I had a letter like two days in the mail. And it was my acceptance into medical school. Woohoo! That's awesome. Good for you. And then how long were you in OBGYN? Well, my whole career, actually, but I did traditional OBGYN for 16 years. Um, came, I, as you may or may not know why I'm in this group, is I'm different than most medical doctors. Um, I'm very rebellious. I don't take the verbatim, this is how you do it. I always am the incessant two year old. Why? Why? Why do you do it that way? A uh, why? And they would get so frustrated with me, but I always had really good outcomes and really good results. So I, I was one of those docs that refused, even in training, to cut an episiotomy. I would just do perineal massage with oil and I would tease a baby out and the docs would get mad at me. What, you need to do a cut? Uh, no, really, I, I really don't need to. And sometimes they take the you know, scissors and do it right in front of me, which was like, Ugh, you know, so... Um, so anyway, very long story short, I fought all the way through and I had to fight my, my program director because I was so defiant in my ways of protecting even the, the residents under me when I was chief resident that he refused to sign my letter to say I was qualified to sit for my boards. And it took the president of the hospital going when I confided in my best friend who happened to work for the president of the hospital. And he said, follow me, went up to this guy's office, grabbed the guy by his shirt like this and put him against the wall and said, you sign this <laughs> letter or she can come after us for discrimination and dun, 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 dun. you know, and we're talking now early eighties. Okay, so that wasn't really a big thing then. But the president of the hospital went to bat for me at Good. two o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday when I needed to have that letter in the national office stating I was qualified to take my boards by 3 p.m. that day. I had one hour to get that letter faxed into that office. So I have been a rebel my entire career. I got to be the president of my organization when I got out of residency. I put a women's wellness clinic in place and my partners called it fluff. Women don't need wellness. They need surgeries. They need more procedures done. They need, and I said, what patient gets up in the morning and says, I really hope my doctor tells me I need surgery today. Nobody. Wow. Yeah. Nobody. I so it it's a, that you're the rebel. Yeah. So a total disconnect from doctor to patient. So anyway, I was president of the organization. I walked, walked, I got home and my husband said, you're home early. I said, I quit my job. You what? <laughs> I said, I'll figure it out, you know? So I went solo and never looked back. So. And that's, that's when you went the wellness route versus the traditional route. Correct. Because I already had been wellness and I was trying to bring it into the traditional world who wanted nothing to do with it. Mm -hmm. Nothing. In fact, the day after I left, they fired the two dietitians. We had a teaching kitchen that brought in more referrals than you know we normally got. They kept on the exercise physiologist because she had a number of different classes that she was running in our padded exercise room. But everybody else, they got rid of. You know, the Chinese acupuncturist, the massage therapy, they fired everybody else and turned everything else into exam rooms for pre-procedural exams. I'm like, you guys are just... Oh my, you know, so I went solo and yeah. And then so tell us about story. the frequencies. When and what type of frequencies did you start incorporating into your practice? 
Well, I brought in a naturopathic doc um, who was from Mexico. And um, he was uh, seeing other patients of mine. And actually, one of my patients challenged me and said, you really have to meet Dr. Jose. So I said, oh, okay. You know, so I dutifully, you know, one afternoon when I had some hole in my schedule and I could make it work, we actually went out to his office and he showed me some of the stuff he was doing and said, I'll train you on all of what I do. And he had some of the things you might've heard about like a Beamer bed and whatever, but he also had um, a computer program that could actually read your frequencies via his computer, even remotely. And he could do drill down to the DNA level of areas and organs in your body that were, were off. And similar to uh, Darlene, you know, he had different colors that you graded the inflammation by, and you could take it from black back to green. So it was a very similar pattern to what Darlene does with hair analysis. Um, so anyway, I'm still running my practice with my chiropractor, and I, I incorporate what he's teaching me, and I'm going one day a week to learn from him. Well, then he retires, and I purchase all of his equipment and bring it into my office which was semi-successful because, you know, you learn okay when you have no pressure, but then when he announced he was retiring and I suddenly was incorporating all of this stuff into my office, it was like, oh shit, how did he say I worked this? Oh no, you know? And so I'd call him once in a while, you know? Well, so I, I stepped into it kind of moderately, but didn't really know what I was doing, so to speak, but I was getting rid of tooth abscesses, you know, with, with some of the, the makeshift Tesla ozone machines that he had and things like that. He had prototypical machines. Um, so I was feeling really, really good about what I was doing. I was using electrical acupuncture in the office, uh, which is really needleless. You're just using topical probes, but you can cover a larger surface area in much less time with the electrical current. And when he literally left then six months to go to Mexico and spend a couple months back in the States. Then I lost my ability to call him on a moment's notice. So then it just, I really had to learn it. So I, that, that's my dabbling in electrical energy. And then one of my patients actually told me at the very, very beginning, because he had followed Cynthia before QHS started, he said, you really need to meet her. Let's set up a call. And that was in March of 2020. Oh, so you've been, you're an OG, like Christine. I am. <laughs> awesome. I am. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. And the device here, I would have doc, when Dr. Gloria starts talking, which can be any time, um, I, she has a device similar to that and she works with patients all over the place. Mm -hmm. That's her full-time gig is with that energy type device. So you guys will hit it off really well. That's awesome. So then let's go ahead and start with the whole, what your protocol is, because here's the deal. Cold and flu season never left it. It was just, uh, left us. I feel like it was just renamed essentially. And so I'm happy now that there are things that we can do. And I did so many tricks myself. I haven't been sick. Um, I wasn't sick at all. Nothing, not even a cold for five years. And then I got this laryngitis thing about, a, oh, I guess it was January of this year. Um, because I know that there's things that we can do and I want to hear from you guys and what, you know, compare what happened with your patients and what you've been able to help people with so that our members can apply these techniques to their daily practices and stay healthy this season. That's the name of the game, isn't it? Is self, it's patient empowerment. Mm -hmm. If you can empower yourself, to be as healthy as you can be. Isn't that the name of the game? My patients would always say, you're teaching me all the tricks to keep me out of your office. And I said, bingo. <laughs> right. Yeah. It's like, follow the money. That's why the traditional doctors, they want the patients in right. the office. You know, it's that rotating, like, um, that revolving door. Yeah. Revolving door. You got it. You know it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yep. Well, well first of all, I want to say to Dr. Oh. Vicki, I want to say, Congratulations on being such a rebel because I've been a rebel my whole life, which is where I got to where I am now. And and if we stop and think about it, 
uh, full credit to what you've done, by the way, first of all. But on top of that, think of how many of us are in this group, in this membership, in our admin group that are rebels. I'm looking at Kelly going, yeah, I know she's a rebel because I know more about her. Mm -hmm. But think about all the rebels that we have. And if we weren't rebels, we wouldn't relate to what all of us are sharing here with you to help you. So what Dr. Vicky's experience, what the experience is with Darlene doing what she does and the frequency scans that I do, it isn't that one is better than another. It's that all of them are needed at specific times and not everybody's going to do all of them. So Dr. Vicky, thank you for being the rebel because then that I have a rebel friend. <laughs> <laughs> you are most welcome. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Tracy. Lead us on. Yeah. So Dr. Vicky, what, what can our members do? I mean, myself included, of course, to stay healthy this season. Well, you know, it, it kind of boils down to what I call the, the top five or six tricks. Okay. And an antioxidant is to help you clear free radicals from your system. It, it sounds really simple and everybody goes, well, that's your vitamin C, right? Well, yeah, you can do vitamin C. And they always talked about at least 5,000. Um, milligrams of vitamin C or five grams of vitamin C. And that sounds horrendous to a lot of people. It can cause GI upset if that's what you start with. So you have to start low and build to get up to 5,000. I would take people sometimes to 8,000, 10,000, but you want a good antioxidant. Now, what I just learned in the past year and probably something Dr. Gloria has known forever, but, um, but astaxanthin is a very, very powerful antioxidant. And actually gram yeah. for gram, astaxanthin is 6,000 times more antioxidant than vitamin C. But if you add a yes. little vitamin C, it enhances that astaxanthin antioxidant. So it is a tremendous, tremendous natural um, protein found in nature. It's actually in crustaceans, believe it or not, uh, in high. Yes. But it was also as astaxanthin was named the cognition ingredient of 2022. Cognition is how your brain works. And that's an accolade coming from the world of nutritional sciences. So it's not just me saying it or Dr. Gloria saying it. It truly is what they call one of those up and coming, newly recognized, you know, newly accoladed kind of supplements. So ask the right. Dr. Vicki, excuse me, Dr. Vicki, do you know anything about, uh, I've read in some scientific journals, but I'm not convinced that you should take those two supplements, the acetansin and the vitamin C with fat in order for it to be absorbed better. Do you have well, any, vitamin any thoughts C on that? Well, vitamin C is not a fat absorbable vitamin. It's a water absorbable vitamin. No, it's vitamin. a water soluble, right. Right. As is astaxanthin. So to me, that doesn't make any sense. That, oh, you know, I know about that. Okay. So liposomal C. That's different. That's liposomal. That's C. different. Yes. Liposomal okay. is, 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 is sublingual, right? It, it goes in sublingual. It's meant to get through the cell membrane because of its phospholipid um, concentration on cell membranes, okay? And right. to get into mitochondria inside of a cell, that's a double-walled membrane on a mitochondria, and that's also a 40% lipid membrane. So the liposomal is for cellular and parts of cellular penetration and therefore integration so it can be used by those cells or parts of those cells in particular, mitochondria inside a cell, because that's your powerhouse, that's your energy producer that makes your ATP. So mm -hmm. what I'm gonna tell you second is um, when, and this is what I call the cleaner upper. And the cleaner upper is a <laughs> glutathione, but in particular, a liposomal glutathione. So this is a research nutritional brand that just happens to be easy comes in a packet that you can see, but it is a liposomal glutathione. So you can see that right underneath here is uh -huh. it says liposomal glutathione. Now this, I would give to patients, um, they could, it's, it's expensive. So it's something that, yes, you can get it off the internet, but it's something that if you put it in your system, 
you can prevent, but where it's it's too expensive to have it on hand all the time. So I would tell people when you start to feel sick, you start taking this and you take the liposomal glutathione along with NAC. Oh, I take that. Yep. And yep, this combination too. is also not only a cleaner upper, like I would call it the cleanup on aisle five. This is the cleanup on yeah. aisle five. Okay. Um, but I would say to people, this is also your anti-aging. And if you have to do one over the other every day, this one is the one to do because of cost. This one is a much more cost effective option. It's life extension. Yes. It needs to be this brand and it's internet available and blah, 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 600 milligrams. But you took, you take these two together and man, this is the story I'll tell you is I had a patient, she was, the, the the patient was sickle trait. The husband was sickle trait. They had a son who was sickle cell. And every time he even got a cold, he would end up in children's hospital getting at least one to two units of blood because his blood would just explode. That's what sickle cells do when they get under oxidative stress. So he got COVID and she called in a panic and said, oh my God, I think we're going to lose him. I said, you put him on this right away. And she said, well, we're already taking this. I said, no, you put him on this and you put him on twice a day, one in the morning, one at night. And she called back three days later and she goes, oh my God. She said, they saw him in the outpatient department, looked at him, gave him one unit in outpatient and then sent him home. She said, normally, they would have kept him overnight and it would have been two units, sometimes three units of blood. She said, we thought we were gonna lose him. She said, 24 hours later, he was back to himself. And that was COVID yeah. in a sickle cell patient. Cell so, patient. Yeah. And Dr. Vicki, do you remember, uh, and I don't know if Tracy, if you ran across this, when COVID hit, which is when I was in the midst of the whole thing, you couldn't get NAC. You couldn't right. get it. I, I use the same one from Life Extension. It's a great product and you can buy it yourself. But the FDA took it off. And so they made even it Amazon scriptable only. Yes, they took it off and you couldn't get it as a, as a consumer. You had to go to an MD. Well, an MD wouldn't write the prescription because they didn't know what in the hell it was. Excuse my French, but it's true. Mm -hmm. And so now it's back on. So I have a stock of it. <laughs> for myself because I'm thinking, okay, we're coming into round two here and I don't want to end up finding out we can't get it. So uh, like Dr. Vicki said, it's not expensive. And if you can get some, you can buy it in, you know, a lot of the health food stores carry life extension, get some and hold on to it. Take it now, but there it is. N and acetyl L cysteine, NAC is usually what they call it, NAC. And um, I have researched other brands, Dr. Vicki, and you're absolutely correct. The Life Extension one, I have all the white papers on it, and it's the purest. Mm -hmm. So it's the one that you should take. So I'm 100% I'm with you there. Right. And get NAC, not NAD. So if you're searching on the internet, there is a difference. People have elevated liver functions. It's a small percent that they get elevated liver functions and yep. liver dysfunction on NAD. So you want NAD. Mm -hmm. NAC, NAC. So are you recommending, like for the, the patient that you had with the sickle cell, like, did you recommend just one of those a day? Because that's all oh, no, I two. recommend. Oh, no, two. One oh, in the morning, okay. one at night. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. No, I've always just said one. So that's good to know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. In okay. fact, I, for many, all through COVID, I took it morning and night, even though I didn't have, I, I had a maskless office. Everybody could come and go. Nobody had to be vaccinated. I didn't believe in the vaccination and, and nobody got COVID from my office. Well, let me, let me share, let me share with you that I did all of the things that, that you and I do, and probably a lot more. Um, I was not exposed to anybody and we both got COVID to the point where I had, I ended up with a concussion and Brian ended mm -hmm. up on kidney dialysis to this day. So where we got it, we don't know. The only thing we know is that it must have been airborne because we went outside of the apartment to run a quick errand about mm -hmm. a half a mile away, came back, and within an hour, 
I was so sick I couldn't stand up and he had to go to bed and didn't even know that I was passing out. Didn't know I hit oh my, my head gosh. and was blacked out in the kitchen floor. So um, to prevent that, because we don't know what viruses are coming, we know that the flu and cold season are coming. We know there's a lot of nefarious things going on. What Dr. Vicki is talking about and a couple of things that I hopefully we'll have time to discuss in a minute is important. It's it's not about being panicky. It's about being proactive. It's not like, oh my God, we're, we're into the season again. It's about preparing, preparing and preparing. I have enough in my apartment. Hopefully nobody else is listening, right? Ha ha. Uh, mm -hmm. That I could have a whole homeopathic and natural pharmacy in my little two bedroom apartment because I know what happens and I know what happened to us had I not had the supplements that I had handy without having to worry about where I'm going to get them. So uh, yes, please, please listen, heed the warning because it's not like you can run out or order it from somewhere or have to go out and get it when you get sick. You can't, you're too sick to do it. And unless Amazon can deliver it to your door the next morning, you're in trouble. So please listen to, to the, the proactive approaches that we're going to share with you because it's really vital. It can be, uh, it can save your life. I know it saved mine. Mm -hmm. And Life Extension, so. they have a great program. If you go to their website directly, you can do like an auto ship type thing. So mm -hmm. um, I've, I use their K2, D3, NAC. I got the enzyme because of Dr. Gloria bugging me about it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Well, the other thing about Life Extension, and we're not here to plug Life Extension, but it's, no, when no. you find something that is honest and something that you know, you've seen the white papers, you know what they're criteria is, um, it's important for you to know that if you ever have a question about an ingredient, you talk to their doctors. There's no charge for that. You call and you get all the research. They'll email you the, the white papers, whatever. So I use them a lot for research. So um, anyway, be proactive. Don't panic. Just prepare is what I tell my patients. Mm -hmm. Okay, so right. what's next on your list, Dr. Vicki? Something so simple, I think everybody is already doing it, but vitamin, I got to get my camera right here, vitamin D, okay? But the bigger question is, do people get their levels checked? And if you don't get your levels checked, right. you have no idea where your vitamin D level is. So know that the range in most labs is 30 to 80 or 30 to 100. Okay, so we'll just use 30 mm -hmm. to 100, just for 100, it's an easy number to remember. So let's say your number comes back at 39 and you say, well, I'm in range. Well, you're not very good in the range. You're 10th percentile. Is that where you wanna live? 10th percentile when you wanna fight something that's coming down the pipe? No, you wanna be more like 75th to 100th percentile. You wanna be optimal, okay? And I would always use Dr. Dale Bredesen's end of Alzheimer's and reversing Alzheimer's criterion for not just normal range, optimal range. Optimal, if, if I say to you, do you wanna feel good or do you wanna feel your best? Well, who says they wanna just feel good, right? You wanna be your best. Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally. So, yeah, so if you wanna right. be your best, you wanna be optimal. So just in normal range isn't good enough. You wanna be optimal. So you wanna be in that 60 to 80 range, not 39. So they'd say, and it my needs patient, to be vitamin D3, D3, yeah, like she just yeah, showed you. Yeah. And in my patients, I say vitamin D3 plus K as well, a kangaroo, right. because that is, explain to, to our, our members why the K is important, because well, a lot of people don't understand it. So I always say you'd better get a vitamin D3 plus K, which there are formulas that way. Right, there are. But many times the K is not is not high enough. So when somebody would have an elevated clot risk, what I would do is put them on more vitamin K than what a D plus K supplement would have. So I- Yes, you're correct. I, yep, I would put them, so you're preventing blood clots is what the K is doing, mm -hmm. okay? And many right. times, you know, you can have, as you can have a, a maximum amount level of vitamin D, but your K is too low and you're still at blood clot risk. Mm -hmm. So what I right. would do is, is measure their, and, and sorry, I'm going really medical, but I would measure for a blood clot risk, which is called a D-dimer. It's a blood test. 
And if that D dimer was elevated, it showed you were at risk for a blood clot, even if you felt fine. But that's one of those labs you can do to see if you're at risk to get really, really sick if you get COVID. Because if you already well, run, and here's the, you're at risk. Yeah, you're at risk. And here I've had blood clots, so I know what she's talking about with the D dimer. But the old name was the protein, correct? They used to no, call it your no, protein they're measuring in the different, lab. No? You're measuring different things, you know, so you're clo it's okay. close, but not quite. But um, a D dimer is actually um, a measure of, well, it, it's a protein. It, it's part of an inflammatory um, cascade, if you will. Um, so right. protein is measuring how that cascade is working. So it, it, that's a really yeah. simplified explanation, but that's kind of the difference. But that's, um, that's the definition. Okay. And when people get blood work done, I find with my patients, and I'm sure you did too, Dr. Vicki, that they go in and they, they have this false sense of security because they have a whole, you know, it's a yearly exam, the insurance pays for it or Medicare or whatever, and they get the full, the full um, blood workup. Oh. But unless they ask for full, yeah, full, she's right. Uh, unless you ask for the vitamin D, they don't all do it automatically. I would say 90% of my patients do not get the D check and they do not get the D dimmer and they hit dimer and they would have to ask for that or they can go to an independent lab and have it done. But it's important, especially in this environment of viruses that we have, that we know I've had a blood clot when I had my accident, went into pulmonary embolism. I'm not mm. going to take a risk. I'm going to do what Dr. Vicky says and take more vitamin K with my D3 to make sure I don't have a propensity towards blood clots. So, and as we age, we have more propensity as well. You have right. a bad bump, you had you bump, bump yourself somewhere, there, it could be a blood clot, even if you don't think you have a high risk. Okay, right. so and, let's talk right? numbers. So D3, like 5,000 more, less. It depends on your number, okay? So I would say yeah. to patients, if you're heading into cold and flu season, you just take 10,000 international units every day. I don't care what your number is. We'll figure your number out later, okay? Because there's very little <laughs> risk to you for a high vitamin D. But okay. there's a lot of risk to you for a low vitamin D. So 10,000 international units a day, period. End of statement. Yeah. Okay. And what about K2? How much K2 should they take? Well, K2, again, now it's tricky because you're talking about blood clot mm -hmm. risk, but you don't want blood thinner. So I would put people, once I knew their D-dimer, most people needed to be on what I call super K, which is 2,500 uh, micrograms of vitamin K. So you're talking a much higher uh, number, but it's because most D plus K, you're not going to find near that amount of vitamin K in there. So no, you won't. Right. And, but and please don't hurt doctor you. yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Don't don't decide to be doctoring yourself. What Dr. Vicki and I are sharing is sharing information and experience from what we have observed and, and been educated on. What the thing that really upsets me is when somebody goes off on a tangent and I know Dr. Vicky's got to be grinding her teeth when that happens too. And somebody will say, well, I did this and it really worked. And then they go out and they take that, that prescription or they go out and take that supplement. And you're putting yourself at risk because like Dr. Vicky stated, you don't know what the blood results are. You don't really know. You're shooting rubber bands at the moon and hoping to hit it. Please sure. don't do that. It's very dangerous. It's, it, this is to give you information so that you can go on and ask for a specific blood test or make some dietary changes, like take some more omegas for inflammation, and that will also help your, your um, immune system. But don't just go out and, unless you're just eating food that's going to give you a vitamin C, for instance, you'd have to have a bucket full, yeah, or the end will signal. I don't even know where to get uh, NAC, uh, Dr. Vicki, from a nutritional source, do you? I don't from a nutritional source. Again, online. Yeah, I don't where, either. Yeah. 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 I've, I've looked it up and I haven't found a nutritional source. So there are some things you can literally supplement with your food. But, you know, like selenium you can do with food very easily. But you can't do that with all the supplements. So don't depend on eating two carrots and think you've got enough of, of a vitamin or having one orange and you think you've got mm -hmm. enough vitamin C. One other mm -hmm. comment I'd like to make, and I don't know if you've done it, um, you probably have in maybe a, a different term. When I tell my patients, uh, as I agree with Dr. Vicki, that it's usually 5,000 
milligrams a day is, is kind of a baseline of vitamin C, but I say it's always to bowel tolerance. So mm -hmm. that means the minute you get loose stools or, or bloating or cramping, your, bo yeah, your body is saying, mm -mm, I don't need that much. So don't think because vitamin C is a certain amount that's recommended, it's for everybody. I have, my older son uh, was born premature and um, he's adopted at birth. So we don't know any health history on him and his lungs never developed. So he has to take up to 25,000 a day, not 10,000, 25,000 in order to not be in the emergency room with an asthma attack. And he's 50 years old and he still has to do it. He never got bowel uh, discomfort. It was not uh, a GI disturbance because his body could use it. It needed it. If I did that, oh my God, it'd probably be in the emergency room because I can <laughs> tolerate about four to 5,000 a day, right? So mm -hmm. just just understand these are guidelines and they're, and they're guidelines that have been created through many, many years. It is not giving you advice or telling you what to take or what amount to take. You need right. to take the responsibility to have those tests done and request them. And I have patients that their doctor won't order it because the insurance won't pay for it. I had a lady yesterday and she was asking for it. And I always ask them, and this is something I want to ask Dr. Vicki before we get off subject, because we're talking about um, the season that we're in, let's put it that way for, for lack of a better way of putting it. Um, I always tell them to check, the, you know, other tests in their full panel and the insurance won't pay for it anymore. Well, so they will we pay for sure. it if you pro if you code it appropriate, you know, appropriately. But many docs refuse to learn what those codes are because their employer, right. the hospital, tells them they can't go there. So the doc right. may want to do That's it, right. but their employer says you do that, you'll get docked vacation pay. You do it again, you're going to get right. docked, um, you know, your something else. You do it the third time, you're fired. So that's it, right. It, yeah, so that's why I- And this is why I'm there are, yeah, you were independent and so am I. And so when you are, you know, when you're, when you're given a no and you've requested something, take responsibility and go to an independent lab. I mean, the last time I had my D-dimer checked, it was $39. I mean, it's not a big deal. It's not like you're, you know, you can have a whole blood panel done. And the thing is, you do need a practitioner to be able to help you interpret it. But the point is, you can get a reference range if it's just one or two things. Um, like homocysteine is something I always tell people to have checked. Why? Because it, you know, you understand, because it, it shows you homocysteine, that's C-Y-S-T-E-I-N-E, -E. homocysteine checks for the risk of a cardio event. And, and here I have people that and have had- kidney. And, mm -hmm. and kidney. And kidney, yes, thank you, and kidney. Yeah, I forget the kidney, I really do. I uh, usually use it for heart uh, monitoring. And I've had people that have had heart attacks and strokes and the insurance won't pay because they're okay now, okay? They won't pay for the homocysteine levels. And so they go to the lab and they do it themselves. So understand that that's where the responsibility comes uh, on your plate, not on the doctors right. or the naturopaths. And or one yeah, of you the... have to know what to do. Right. Yeah, go ahead. One of the independent labs is Life Extension. And so if you want to write that down, Life Extension is a lab yes. that you can actually go in and order your own labs. So yeah. you'll pay for them. But Tracy, I, be... I gave you another name. I don't remember the name offhand. Remember the lab I gave you? There's another lab. I don't know if you've used them, Dr. Vicki, that is a little bit less expensive, but it doesn't matter. I really trust Life Extension. But it's you, you go online and you figure out what um, test you want. And they'll tell you how much it costs for the whole panel. And then the, you look up the location and see what labs in your area accept that. You pay for it online and you go with your little receipt that they right. have you print. It's I don't remember the name of the labs. Do you, without looking it up, Tracy? I, yeah. yeah, I don't remember. But lab, uh, Life Extension is part of LabCorp, which is a national lab. So there are draw stations yes. everywhere, you know, which yes, makes it. Yes, there are. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I so have another Those call. are some options. Yeah, I have another call at two o'clock. So I just want to, you know, put that out there that I have a time constraint coming up. Yeah, let's finish the list. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> um, so number four on the list is most of us get really acidic 
and we are, are working in an acid based body. And what we have to remember is that we really it, it's it's kind of like working in a cesspool, if you will. So besides antioxidants and things that are in tissue, we have to have a way to pull out the acid and actually get a little bit more mm -hmm. neutralized in some of our tissues or the acid will actually kill us. Minerals we need, you know, right. so the, I've never understood the whole taking minerals out unless you're in a really hard water situation. But then softening is usually right. the easiest and more cost effective way of going about it unless you have hard metal you know, or, or, you know, bad metals in your water or contaminated water supply. Um, number, right. so that, that's number four. Number five actually is um, kind of an add-on that I put on, and I'm going to show you two things. They're two different brands, but they're both methylated B vitamins. And when I say methylated, this is the complex. And the complex is from Metabolic Maintenance, my favorite. And it's a, um, it's a methyl in the folate and it's a methyl in B12. Why methyl? Methylation is a detox method in your tissues. And if you cannot properly methylate, which 15 to as much as they say, even up to 30% of the population is missing the genetics to properly methylate, that if you cannot methylate, you're in trouble and you may actually have diagnoses that you've been given that have nothing to do with that diagnosis. It's that you can't clear the junk. Fibromyalgia is one of those. When you can't clear junk out of muscle that you use, we all know the term, feel the burn. Well, if you can't get rid of the burn and it's always there and it builds over time and years and you're never clearing it, you're always going to have muscles that ache. Guess what can take that away? A methylated B12. And the methylated folate. B12 is good for what you see on that leg, really good for your brain. So methylated is an easy thing to do. Uh, methylated B vitamins, you can do um, the test, MTHFR is the test, the blood test that tells you if you're missing any of these genes, but you can just go ahead and start taking methylated B vitamins. It also helps bring down your cortisol if you're really, really high or too low, and that's a stress indicator. So B vitamins are really, really good for stress. So those are my tricks. Awesome. That is just so fabulous because some of the stuff I've heard before, but others not at all. So I so appreciate you. And you know what I love, Dr. Vicki, about today's conversation is I could just feel your passion behind what you are doing. And I just... I love it. Thank you so much for coming. I'm sorry things went a little longer for you, you, but we'll have to have you back another time. Thank you. I would appreciate Thank that. We can have round two. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you, Dr. Vicki. That was great. Oh, you're so Thank welcome. You. Sorry, but I've got to leave. Okay. Yes, I appreciate okay. you. Have a bye beautiful bye. weekend. Thank you, doctor. Okay, okay bye, bye. bye. Well, wasn't that a treat? Woo that was so fun. I, oh my gosh, my camera's off. How did that happen? Yep. Lovely internet. Off again. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. That was rocking and rolling. Thank you, Dr. Gloria, for, you know, having those wonderful, helpful conversations with her when you guys talk your medical speak. I have so many notes. I'm going to have to really put them together. And if anybody else is taking notes, please send them my way so I can organize this for everyone for a re for the replay. All right. So yeah, and Tracy, uh, aren't we going to do? Aren't we going to do something later with with uh, other supplements that are important during this season and the foods that you can eat to get some of those? Weren't you and I going to do something like that? Is that on our schedule for next week? No, I, I think so. Let, Let me see because going. I know she and I coordinated. I, I wanted to make sure that yes. I could share with you next where week. you can get the zinc and the selenium and, and next week. So. This, make sure that you you tune in because I have a whole list of research that I've done and what protocols I put my patients on during COVID and what I did. Uh, unfortunately, um, when I got so sick and I blacked out, I mean, it took me two and a half weeks to even get to where I could think again. But uh, it's next week, isn't it? Yes, next week. And also you're going to talk about the foods that we can incorporate into our meal plans. Right. 
moving forward into our meal plan and how you can get those supplements from your food rather than just having to take a handful of supplements. So um, that's really important. So you and I are going to talk about that next week and go back and forth. So make sure you bring lots of notes paper. Okay. Yeah, that'll be good. And um, should we go ahead and take the questions, comments for everyone that has their hand up now? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Cindy, sure. you're up. Go ahead. Thanks. That was hard. This is hard to follow after all that. That was great information. Thank you. <laughs> um, so I just had my hand up to say about, I did Julie's breath work and I've done been doing Julie's breath work since April. And so it's, it's been fabulous and there's no right way or wrong way to do it. And I, it's helping me sleep better. It's helping me process a lot of um, emotional stuff that my I've experienced over the year, you know, the last couple of years, but then just in general that our body stores. So, yeah. So that's just wanted to share that about the breath work. So let me ask you a question. If you Thank don't you. mind sharing, if you don't feel comfortable, Cindy, it's okay. But nope, have I'm you good. been able to process and release like stored emotions, trauma or any of that already? So Wonderful. I guess. So I'm not afraid to say, I, you know, what? I spend a, a lot of my time is crying. And I think a lot of us, you know, we don't release it. And, and I, I'm one of those. I, I've always tried to be the, the rock one and, and um, you know, be strong and say, okay, I can just get through this. And mm -hmm. it just has helped me to release a lot. So I do a lot of crying when I do those sessions. That's what brings up for me. And I don't know where, it, you know, I just, a lot of, a lot, I guess one thing I can say that's been recent is losing my husband to cancer and seeing all what he went through and just, you know, feeling like I wish I knew all this, a lot of this information that we've heard then so that I would be the more rebellious person that I wanted to be. And I knew I couldn't against the medical, you know, thing, but so it helps me process a lot of those emotions. Okay. That's great to know. Thank, Thank you, Cindy. So that's good. Me. That's great. Awesome. And Linda. Yes. Um, I really enjoyed the first two parts of, um, of the <laughs> seminar that we went through. I attended a breath work, um, a couple of sessions a few years ago. Um, this was quite different. I didn't, um, I kind of expected it to be the same, but um, the breathing part is different. And I can't say that I enjoyed that part. I started getting really, really dry mouth and needed to stop a couple of times and get a drink. And maybe I was trying too hard or um, maybe it's just too dry in our house. But I can't say that I enjoyed that much, but um, I, th I think that I slept so much better that night. Um, yeah, I, I wanna try it again. Um, there was a lot of noise going on in the rest of my house and I think I was distracted too. So I'm gonna try it again. Well, I'll tell you for Thank encouragement, you. the first time I did it, I felt the same way. Like I felt like I was working too hard in the breathing. Like I was, it was forceful and I didn't have any of the experience of the shaking and I just felt like it was work. But then the second time, what I did was I just allowed myself to relax and breathe through my mouth because I breathe through my nose usually. And um, I also always have my the tongue at the top of my, uh, the roof of my mouth. Okay. But the second time I had a way better experience. I just more relaxed and let it flow instead of forcing it. Yeah, I didn't have any um, really emotional things come up. It was more of a relaxing thing. And I almost went to sleep a couple of times. So <laughs> <That's> <laughs> well, awesome. keep trying and see what happens. <laughs> really quick before anybody else leaves, I want to encourage everyone to do one thing, at least that Dr. Vicki taught you. Okay. I will also put up the notes when I release the replay later today. But if you guys could just decide on one thing that you're going to apply to your life, I have little pink post-it notes everywhere scribbled with notes, but I'd already know what I'm going to try. And um, that's that liposomal glutathione, just to have those packets in case we need them. And so please, you guys just make every week, if you could just come up with one tip 
that you add to your your lifestyle practices the when these compound it's not it's exponential it's not like one plus one equals two it's like one plus one equals three and then when you add the third that's like you know mm -hmm. ten so please be encouraged by that okay next up deborah so um i was pretty um i was yawning a lot um the whole evening and it's really hard to do that breath work when you're yawning. So I found that I kind of, <laughs> I would get to that place of, of tremor. Um, but then I'd have to start over. So it was like, it happened in waves for me. Um, and then sometimes my legs would flop open in like a butterfly and that would stop it as well. So it seemed to me that, that for me, the trembling was when my legs were only partway open. And, um, but then what was interesting is, so I just, I just went with it. And, um, sometimes I got my whole body rocking, um, and then it would stop. And then I would focus on the breath again and, and do that. What was interesting to me was that when I woke up in the morning and I did a little bit of the breath, I was able to recreate that for myself and get some more movement. So I'm really looking forward to more um, guided, um, breath work. You know, I should ask her for the music that she used during the, um, the breathing session. So we could do this as part of our daily practice, you know? Um, so that, that just gave me a good idea. So that's good right. that you can, and the more we practice something, the better we get. Right. So mm -hmm. But yawning is a stopper. <laughs> you can't really <laughs> breathe in and out of your mouth when you're and yawn. <laughs> so. well, I yawn. You're yawning. <laughs> That's awesome. But I didn't think about that. So, but I would think that the yawning, because it takes you out of fight or flight, I, it's got to have a scientific thing. Because did you see the animal shaking in that video? So they were the animal was frozen. And then it went to shake mode and then it went to active mode. So there's got to be, I'd be curious to know about the, how the yawning goes into that. So thank you for bringing that up. Awesome. Okay, Marion. I had a very low key experience. I liked it all. I knew I was learning important an important process, uh, my body just didn't respond very much. And so I'm aware that possibly um, there will be some um, reactions to that when I least expect it. And that would be fine. Uh, in the meantime, I'm looking forward to going through the whole thing again, because that was my first time. And I just know it's a good thing. My body knew that too. It just didn't do much with it. Yeah. And you know what? Like I said, the second time was better for me. And I think as we build and keep going, it will be better. So I'm excited. And if anybody hasn't watched those videos, I'm going to figure out a way to get them out again um, so that you will be able to do that. Okay. Um, all right. We have three I posted them in Telegram. The whole recently. Bunch just today right a little while ago oh kira thank you you're welcome all right linda um that was the first time i've ever been through that whole process i do yoga and pilates and a, a lot of breathing in that but i think it's a different kind of breathing um the only thing i would say is i hope that it can get shortened down to more like an hour i was exhausted by the time it was done because it just yeah, seemed like me too hour. um I don't, I don't, I don't know if that would take away from it because I, I loved the conscious dancing, but it seemed to get long. I'm like, Oh, another song. And then, and maybe that was put some negative in my head to go through the process. But, um, and then like even the meditation, or I think it was meditation at the very end. Um, you know, I think we did three or four songs, but I think at least personally, I would be more likely to go through the whole process of it if it could be shortened um, down somewhat. 
And you know what? Normally she does. It's an hour. Okay. So I feel like, you know, I don't know the whole reasoning behind everything, but I will give her that feedback. Thank you. Sounds good. Cool. Thanks, Thank Linda. Okay, Arison. Our question is, uh, doctors give us a lot of things for uh, blood thinner because of the K issue and they want to keep our blood flowing. Uh, is there something in vitamins that we can take? I have heard vitamin C helps that. Is that a possibility or is there something else? Madam, let, me, let me answer that. Uh, yeah, there is. But there again, this is what really upsets me because then we're giving medical advice. We don't know the condition. We don't know the blood work. We don't know what other conditions are underlying. Like with me, I have a issue with my lymphatic system. I've had blood clots. Yes, to answer your question, Eris, and there are things. And there are things that I use with my patients and things that I take every day. Um, somebody mentioned natokinase, yes. But to tell somebody, take natokinase or take uh, you know, tart cherry juice, which is amazing, it's like an aspirin, you, you have to know how much to take and you have to know the condition of the person. So for legal and ethical reasons, we can't answer questions like that. And, and we've been very clear on that. But yes, there are. To answer your question specifically, there are two or three things and I use both of them, the one somebody mentioned and the tart cherry juice. But I know what my, what my D-dimmer is. I know what that ratio is and I know how much I need to take. So yeah, you don't have to take like Coumadin because I was on Coumadin and heparin for a while after my, my blood clots, yes. But I took them just long enough to save my life and then I went on the natural supplements. And and uh, Arison, my accident was in 92 and they told me I'd never be off Coumadin. And I only took it for about five to six months and my doctor was great. He said, okay, once your blood is fine, you go ahead and take all your natural supplements and I have ever since. So I, there's no way you'd give me Coumadin again. Unless, again, like I said, if it was a, a, an accident like I had and it was you know, take the Coumadin or die, of course I would. But um, we, we just can't, and, and please be careful even in the chats because people are giving each other um, advice on take this supplement and do this and take this tea and take that. And I've had people end up in emergency, not from this group, because somebody has told them to take a tea for something that ended up affecting their blood pressure or ended up affecting their kidney health. And so be very careful with that. We're, we're not here to give advice and the chat shouldn't be for that either. And I've mentioned that to Tracy and I've mentioned it to Cynthia. It's very dangerous to be saying, well, you should take this because you got a toothache and you should take that for a UTI. You don't know the underlying condition of that patient. So please be careful with that. It's great to want to help somebody, but understand the responsibility that goes with it. So, uh, but yes, to answer your question, there are things, yes. Go ahead, Tracy, with our next question. I okay. hope that makes sense to everybody, why you have to be so careful. <laughs> okay, last yeah. question, Jorgen. I can't hear you. you. It says you're unmuted, but I don't hear you, honey. You hear me now? Yep. Okay, yes. I would participate yeah. in the press way, but could you do it? a little bit earlier um you know what i didn't pick the time to do it um so and we haven't decided on because honestly i missed yoga for that class which i don't like to do at the end of the day i need to go to yoga <laughs> so <laughs> we are trying to figure out what what we're going to do exactly okay the but i will let thing, you know. okay the last Somebody says Nanosoma is a very powerful uh, supplement. I don't know if you have heard about it. Yeah, I've heard of it. Okay, thank you. I've tried it. I tried thank Nanosoma. You. I didn't notice anything from it. Other people probably have, you know, so. But for me personally, I didn't notice anything. Thank so. you. Thank All right, Dr. Gloria, you, can you tell them about the, the bisque, the pumpkin bisque? Well, the pumpkin bisque is one of two pumpkin soups that I've made. The other one is amazing. It's a French soup uh, that we will have later on. But it is an easy way for you to open a can of pumpkin, 
And when you serve it, you're not going to know that you open the can of pumpkin because it's delicious. Just remember something. Uh, I just did a dish this morning in a hurry and I didn't like it because I don't eat some, something the first day. Tracy's shaking her head because she knows that. Make the soup ahead of time if you can, the night before, and have it the next day because pumpkin absorbs everything like a sponge. So even though it's a puree, if you make that soup the night before, you're going to love it. And you might even want to put a little nutmeg on top when you serve it. Okay, so let us know how you like it. I love your comments yes, when you say I delicious. made your dish or I made your soup. I made or, so much, I just yeah, yeah. You, you you made it more than once, didn't you? Um, no, not that one. I made the chicken curry and I made the pad thai twice. Those are my two favorites. So yeah, well, this is going to be one of your favorite soups, and it freezes beautifully, by the way. So I usually cheat and put a little fresh shaved parmesan on top and. Sometimes I even grind up some pine nuts in my coffee grinder that I have just for herbs. Uh, so you can, you know, garnish it with whatever you like or whatever you have on, on hand. But it's a very healthy soup. And it's not, um, you know, it's not high carb. The carb that's in the pumpkin is natural. It's not like you're adding a piece of bread unless you want some nice crusty bread with it. Mm -hmm. um, you, you really have a, a healthy dish. So let me know how you like it. <laughs> okay. Okay. <No>. Awesome. <laughs> All right, you guys. And I'm also going to close with saying, first of all, thank you to all of you for coming and joining us, for participating, for deciding to take your health into your own hands and adopting healthier lifestyle habits. And I also want to say that if any of you have like a gift of, well, I know you all have gifts, but if <laughs> you have a topic that you are passionate about and that you are you know, a semi-expert in that you want to share, please reach out to me and let me know what that is. And if you already have reached out to me and have not heard back, do it again. Um, mm -hmm. Sometimes I get overwhelmed with my inbox and I don't get to everything. So please forgive me if I haven't responded to any, from, to any of your messages or emails. But I'm excited to see you guys. December is going to be a fabulous month. We have our giveaway that Kelly and I are working on. It's going to be lots of fun. And um, next week, like Dr. Gloria said, she's going to talk more immune boosting tips and, and we'll continue. I don't even know what's the week after that, but we're going to talk a lot about food next week. And if you haven't seen my hug yes. videos, I'll tell you, I'm working through this book, Life Changing Foods, which I love this book. And there's a lot of immune boosting foods that I've noticed that are in yes. there as well. So check out what I've put that out so again. far. Okay. It's really, we even made a graphic with a checklist so that you can use that checklist for your weekly grocery shopping. And if you were just to have one of each thing a week, think about how much healthier you would be. And it's better to have variety in your diet anyways, because you really can develop sensitivities to different foods when you eat them over and over and over. So we've heard it before, eat the rainbow. We know that variety is key, but I really do firmly believe that it's more important than we even know. And I, for one, have been very habitual in my food intake, but now I'm really expanding things and I want to encourage you to do the same. Local, seasonal, farmer's market is your best mm -hmm. bet. Um, so, but if you can't do that, then, you know, do the best that you can. All right, you guys. So we're going to wrap it up for Thank today. You. Thank you so much again. Let's go ahead and bring your Thank hand you, everybody. to your forehead. May you think only joyful thoughts to your lips. May you speak only kind words. And to your heart, may you show love to yourself and to all those around you. Peace, peace, peace. Namaste. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, everybody. So much love. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Thank you, everybody. Thank Thanks, you. Tracy. Thanks, Dr. Gloria. Mm -hmm. Bye for now, you guys. You're welcome. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.